When you get two engines side by side, it makes some comparisons pretty stinking easy. So I've got my 4.8 here, and I got the completed 6 liter here, and um, I just scored a uh, 2000 stall um, torque converter from Summit Racing. That's what I'm going to be using. Uh, I mentioned that in the last video. Uh, a couple things to pay attention to, and I think this is an appropriate time for me to mention. Uh, w what do you do to adapt it to your older GM transmission, whether it's an early 700, or turbo 350, or a 400? I've made several videos in the past, you know, um, uh, what did I use? I used, I call it the, uh, well, it's basically a, a spacer that hammers into the back of the crank. This 4.8 here uses... Um, a dish style uh, flex plate. And what I mean by that is if you look, the the hub of the crankshaft is re recessed in. This one is the short, shorter version of the shorter crankshaft here. See how pretty much the flex plate is flush with the rear main seal housing. Um, that negates you having to use a, and of course I don't have any more to show, show and tell. That negates the fact that you need to use a, um, a hammer and spacer. You get them for about 20 bucks. I call them a cock ring. All it is is a step bushing. Hammers into the crankshaft. And it gives something for the... <clears throat> something for the pilot to ride on. Uh, my good friend Tony told me, anytime you buy a new torque converter, and this is uh, recommendations for every other um, hot rodder out there buying a new converter, they tend to overpaint the, hot, the, the, the hub here. Make sure you take some sandpaper or some scotch bright to your hub, clean the hub up real good, and it wouldn't be a bad idea to do it in your crank flange itself, clean all this crap out of it. The hub should spin in there freely. Um, but back to the comparison, obviously you saw that's a dished flex plate. This is an early long crankshaft. Let's see if you go in here and look. You got more space. I can fit my fingers between the flex plate and the block, whereas on this one I cannot. We're talking a quarter of an inch, maybe three-eighths of an inch. Yeah, more clearance. This is a flat flex plate. Early 4.8s, early 6 liters had a longer crankshaft with a flat flex plate so they can use it behind or they can use a 4L80 behind it versus a 4L60. So for the early crankshaft, 99, some 2000s, primarily the 6 liter, the Ironhead 6 liter, you do not need any kind of crankshaft spacer to mount the torque converter. You don't need any kind of spacer at all. None. The snout seats right in nice and neat. The only thing I don't like, and I'm... is it'll sit nice and flat and flush. There we go. We're fine. So, while I'm holding this in place here, you're going to notice the bolt holes don't match up. The 4L80 torque converter uses like a really long, wide, metric bolt pattern. So you look at the boss versus you look where the... You look where the holes are. You're off by about three eighths of an inch. You can either spend the money and buy the correct flex plate for the application or what I'm going to do, because you got plenty of meat, I'm going to simply take a die grinder, or a, a Dremel, or a high-speed electric straight grinder with a carbide bit, and open up them holes just a bit, so I can get a bolt through. It's not a big deal. I did it on the Cutlass. I'm going to do it on this thing. But yeah, in a nutshell, Simple, quick comparison. I'm sorry I didn't have the, the spacer ring, but I mean, Michigan Motorsports sells it. You can get it from uh, Summit Racing. Hughes makes it. I'm sure various Chinese suppliers on eBay who have ripped off our American patents have made it. So, there's our fun little update. Enough blabbering. I'm going to get back to work.